That single belief calls us together as a community and sends us into our world with hope and purpose. At our church, your past will never define your future. There's always redemption, which means there's always a brighter day. At our church, we don't think we're better than any other church out there. We're just doing our best to become our best. At our church, we want you to believe in God, but we also want you to know that God believes in you. We are not against people who don't attend church anywhere. Instead, we pursue them with love, the very same love that's pursuing us. At our church, we're learning to serve God with all our hearts and we're learning to worship Him with all our lives. And if you're looking for the perfect church, we're not it. At our church, we will make mistakes, but we will choose to grow from them. At our church, we're part of a global community that's knit together by the resurrection of Jesus. And by the way, at our church, we believe that really happened too. At our church, we will engage with people who are in real need because we are the hands and the feet of Christ. And finally, we need you to hear this loud and clear. At our church, it's not really our church at all, it's His. And we live and move and breathe in His church for His glory and His fame, not ours. So here's the invitation. You're invited to jump in with your whole heart at your own pace and to experience the life that awaits you in Christ. Friends, this is going to be good. Welcome to our church. to worship and glorify his name in this place hallelujah come on let's let him know that he's worthy to be praised lord we've come to put all our attention and focus on you oh god yeah, yeah. come on let's sing again i'm trading my sorrow i'm trading my shame i'm laying it out
but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond a curse, for his promise will endure, that his joy is going to be my strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. tonight we come into this place to give ourselves to you, oh God, to put all attention and focus on who you are, and to honor and bless you, our Father, our Creator, and our friend, God. Lord, I ask tonight, Father, that we would just, Father, be reminded, Father, that we have relationship with you, Father, that we are close to you, and Father, that we can come to a place of being intimate with you, Lord. Lord, tonight, let us just give ourselves, give our all to you, Father. Lord, for the worship is not about us, but, Father, it is all about you being lifted up and all about you being exalted high, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We glorify you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, all attention is on you. We bow.
holiness, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us holiness, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to Join hands with somebody close to you tonight, just in a point of contact, in a point of agreement. There's power in agreement. Something happens when we come into unity. And in this atmosphere, in a sign of unity tonight, we join our hands with our brother to our right and our sister to our left. And we declare tonight and decree that 
healing is the children's bread. And we thank you for the healing tonight that will flow into our bodies. We thank you for, God, the household of faith and those who are not even able to be among us tonight that are dealing with sickness and affliction in their body, but we come into agreement for them tonight. And we speak into that hospital room. We speak into their bedroom. We speak to where they are. And we declare the word of the Lord to go to them tonight and be healed in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, I thank you today that you wrong, you right the wrongs. And so family issues that are wrong, I speak to it tonight to for the Holy Spirit to go and work it out. God, bring healing to broken relationships. Bring healing to marriages that, God, they may be still living in the same house, but they're already separated and divided in their hearts. But let unity come to them again tonight. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you tonight. God, that you're touching, you're moving, you're ministering. We thank you that, that we are saying tonight that drug addiction can't exist in this valley. It will not continue to destroy generations. We, we bind it up tonight in the name of Jesus. We take authority over it. We say poverty will not reign in this valley. But we take authority over it in the name of Jesus. And we declare tonight that good jobs are coming. Good jobs are coming. Hallelujah. Raises are coming. God, you're going to give creative ideas to your people that will cause wealth to come into their hands. I thank you for this tonight. In the name of Jesus, poverty will not hold us down. Hallelujah. We give you praise and glory for it. We thank you tonight, God, that you have blessed us with all spiritual blessings and everything that pertaineth to life and godliness. And God, tonight we just come as children. And God, we come for our bread. We come tonight, God, for what you have already prepared for us. And we say yes to your will, yes to your ways, yes to your wants, and yes to your desires for our life. We keep a yes on the altar of our heart. No matter what you ask, we say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you tonight that you are working on our behalf. God, you're working behind the scenes. You're working things out because those things that we've prayed for and we've sought you for. But God, we know that you are working them and they're coming to pass. And we give you praise and glory for it tonight. God, we don't have to see it. We just know it tonight. We know it in our spirit. We know it, God, because your word has promised it. So we stand upon that eternal word and we believe you for it tonight. And we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for household salvation, Lord. We thank you for deliverance, Lord. We thank you, God, that that son, that daughter that's been bound up is being set free tonight, God. We thank you that generational curse and sickness is broken, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord. We just want to thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, let your kingdom come and let your will be established within us tonight. Everything that you desire for us, we say yes, God. Everything that you desire for this house, we say yes, Lord. Put us in alignment, prepare us, allow us to be used as tools in your hand. We give you praise and glory for it tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now just slip up your heart toward him right there and thank him for what you've been believing him for. Go ahead and thank him like you know it's already taken place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we thank you for that 200 souls this year. God, we know there's already been 28, but we're believing you for 200. We thank you for 28 souls, but we believe in you for 200 this year. We thank you for that tonight. Glory to God. We give you praise and give you glory for it. 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor beside of you, to your right or to your left. May have to find somebody, but tell them I'm glad you got to worship with me tonight. Amen. Then you might be seated if you desire. Our ushers are coming tonight to wait upon us for our giving and continue in our worship. And we thank you tonight for choosing to be with us and worshiping the Lord together. Welcome those who are watching around the country by the way of the internet. And I appreciate your feedback and knowing that God is blessing there as well. And we're so grateful that you've chose to tune in tonight. Amen. Well, it's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Then we have a wonderful time in the Lord on Sunday. Amen. Yes. And I just anticipate that it'll continue to get better and better. And, and God, God isn't the issue. Our issue is worship. Right? The issue is worship. Everything in your life can be solved when we look at the issue of our worship. That's powerful, but it's true. Somebody says it's too simple. Well, it may be for our little peanut brain, but it is reality that if we will worship him, he will become real. John said, we said, let us be less of me and more of you. John said, let him increase because if he don't ever increase in your life, you'll never be willing to decrease. But when the moment that he increases and you see how big he is, then you'll be willing to say, let there be less of me and more of you. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to continue to push on this. One thing I know from pastoring for these years is that the longer you to minister on something, the more it manifests. Amen. That's the reason I don't preach on hell a lot. Because <laughs> I don't want it to manifest. Amen. But I preach on heaven and the goodness of God and his love and his mercy and his grace. Amen. And worship. Because when we do, then it gives us an atmosphere conducive like it is tonight. Does anybody feel that's more free yeah. here tonight? Amen. Amen. Yes. That's because some things broke on Sunday. Not yes. that we didn't worship. Not that things we didn't thank God for goodness and all. But things broke on Sunday in this house. And we aren't never going back. Amen. Praise God. Never going back. Hallelujah. Well, let me let you worship tonight in your giving. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. And it's because of you that we're able to do all that we're doing. And I purposely have been taking time to share with you because it is because of your faithfulness that we are able to reach the four platforms in which we preach from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. And uh, it's not just a dream, but it is a vision that's becoming reality. And it's because of your faithfulness. And I want to thank you for that tonight. Amen. Father, we love you. We give you praise tonight. We give you honor with our gifts and I just ask you tonight, as we give tonight, that it will be pleasing to your sight, that you will receive glory, honor, and praise. God, not only from the fruit of our lips, but our temporal things, because we are givers. We are givers. We, we give to the vision. We give physically. We give spiritually. We give emotionally. We give our time, our talents, and our treasures. Whatever we have to be able to make the vision come to pass, we give it to you. And I thank you for such people tonight that have that heart. And we give you praise and thanks for this in Jesus' name. And amen. Amen. God bless you in your giving tonight. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul.
God is awesome, isn't he? Amen. Can we give our worship team a good God bless you? Amen. Been working them pretty hard the last few weeks, and I appreciate them and their preparation and just being able to flow with God and what God desires for us and just um, do what he, what he wants us to do, right? And uh, that's, that's awesome. And I thank God for that. Um, as you know, Pastor Jamie has been uh, sharing the last couple of Wednesday nights uh, in uh, my absence, but it uh, isn't just because I have been gone. We planned during this time that we would do this series on worship that I uh, give him opportunity. I wanted you to hear uh, heart from the standpoint of a worship pastor. And uh, so I just wanted to give him a, uh, some time to share his heart and uh, let him minister to us. And uh, even though I haven't been here um, in this house, I've been watching on live stream and uh, doing a wonderful job. And I want him to come and to share the word of the Lord with us on tonight, okay? Amen. Let's give the Lord a good God bless you for our brother tonight. It's been an honor and privilege to have this opportunity the last couple of weeks, and uh, I'm honestly humbled by it. You feel his presence strongly in this place tonight. Let me just stand to our feet one more time. Just take a moment and just just speak to God. Just worship Him. Come on, in your own way in this place tonight. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for who you are. Lord Jesus, we thank you for what you're going to do in this place, Lord. Thank you for what's in store tonight. Lord, we love and honor and serve you, Lord God. Worship. Worthy to be worshipped. Worthy to be worshipped. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your presence, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you are always true to your word, Father. But in the midst, Father, you are there. And that, Lord, when we bring praise and we bring worship, Lord, it creates a place for your glory to dwell. And Lord, I thank you that your glory is dwelling in this house tonight, Lord. Lord, I ask that we would not take for granted, Lord, your presence, your moving right now that is in, happening in this house. Lord, I ask that we would be changed by your word, Lord. Lord, I'm just but a man, Lord, but your word brings power. And Lord, I proclaim that your word would go forth in this place tonight. And we would be challenged and we would be changed, Lord. And I give you honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much. Let's just continue to worship him tonight. I love what Pastor just said. We're not going to go back, are we? It's a choice that we have to make, right? In the beginning of the year when we make our New Year's resolution, a lot of times it lasts for, you know, a week or two weeks. Or sometimes you say it and then you never even get started in the first place. But we have to make the choice to continue on the path. And let's proclaim together in this house that we will make a choice to continue on the path of what God is doing what he's calling to us. Amen. How many of you believed in the song that we were singing in the beginning when we were saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Amen. You believe that? I believe it as well. However, tonight, uh, hopefully you'll continue to believe that as we get into the word a little bit. And uh, because it's easy to say yes, Lord, when it's good things, it's not so easy to say yes, Lord, when it's things that prick you a little bit and take some effort on your end. When God says, yeah, that's the house I want for you, then it's easy to say, yes, Lord. <laughs> that's the car I want you to get. Yes, Lord. That's the job I want you to get. 
But when it gets close to home, personally, in our hearts and in our spirits, it's not so easy to say, yes, Lord. Last week, we talked about the issue of power. And, and, and I hope you know in everything that I'm speaking about, I'm speaking about the issue of worship. But I'm just breaking it down into some different categories. Uh, so we talked about Paul and Silas, and we talked about the fact that uh, God inhabits the praises of his people. And that when we praise him, then it brings his glory in, and it brings his power in. And wherever the power of God is, no other power can stand. And so if God's power is present, then there is no other power that can come in and can bring distraction or cause destruction. And so when we are truly worshiping in spirit and in truth, then according to his word, then it brings his power. And where that power is, then all things are broken, all things are changed, all things are shifted. Amen? Tonight, I want to uh, read out of Romans, and it's going to be the, the chapter 11, the very last verse, and, and then uh, the very first verse of chapter 12. And uh, it says of this, it says, To him be the glory forever. Amen. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Tonight, I want to talk to us about the issue is me. Can you say that with me? The issue is me. All right. Now, don't be pointing at anyone else. Don't say the issue is you. It's the issue is me, okay? This is a hard one, but it's something that we must hear, and it's been on my heart because God's been challenging me uh, in so many areas of my life. It's something that really holds us up and can be a hang-up to us because it includes taking uh, ourselves and actually having to look. It takes us doing what God says in his word and where it says, Search me, O God. Know my heart. Find any wicked way in me and we lead me in the way everlasting. And, you know, the reality is in life being human, we want to include a bit of ourselves in the equation, right? So it's, it's just the human nature to want to include ourselves in what we desire and things. But going back to the scripture that I just read, it says to him, that is God, be the glory forever. It says amen. Now amen, that means yes, God. It means what we were saying earlier. When we say amen, then we're saying I believe what you say, God, and I'm like-minded and I'm like-hearted to you. And it means yes. Next it says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, that's speaking to me and you, brothers and sisters, Christians, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. We'll come back to that in just a moment. It says holy and acceptable to God. Now here's where it gets fun. It doesn't say holy and acceptable to you, holy and acceptable to culture, holy and acceptable to someone or something else. It says holy and acceptable to God. One of the best things that we can do in life when we're trying to make a decision is say, is this holy and acceptable to God? And you'll have your answer. It's not complicated. It's not rock and science. If it's holy and acceptable to him, then you've got your answer. If it's not, you've got your answer as well. Amen? which is your spiritual worship. So what is worship? Let's put this together. The, the two key words that pop out of there to me is worship is glory and worship is sacrifice. When you put those two together, that's what worship is. So let's break those two things down. Glory means weightiness or heaviness or prominence or preeminence. And whoever or whatever is in the position of glory in your life is a central thing of your existence. It's that treasure that you cherish the most deeply in your life. It's where your passion and desires and enthusiasm reside. So who or what is in the position of glory in your life tonight? What is the most important thing in your life? Where do you put your treasure? Where do you put your desires? And what happens is because we are human, we only have limited resources, and we only have so much time, and we only have so much money, and we only have so much energy. And so we start making decisions in life. And we start saying, I'm not going to do this because I would rather do this. Or I'm not going to spend money here because I'd rather to spend money here. I won't give time, money, or energy to these causes or these people or these activities. Instead, I will make sacrifices so that I can do this. 
So worship, I can put value in these things I want to do. They show up in our calendars, in our phone, in our daily decisions. They show up in our budget. Life is made up of us not doing something so that we can make time to do something that we find more glorious. And we make these decisions all the time. And the reality is every single day we're making worship decisions, whether we realize it or not. What he says in this passage is this is our spiritual act of worship. So anything that we do that becomes a point of glory in our life, a point of major focus in our life, then it is a worship decision we are taking towards that glory. Someone or something is in glory, we sacrifice for the glory of that person or thing. And that is by definition worship. That being said, this is a definition of worship that works for Christians and non-Christians alike. It works for everyone. I want to give you an example or two. Uh, When you look at Paul, Paul in the New Testament writes that some people have their stomach as their God. Now that is a weird sounding statement, isn't it? That just sounds awkward and strange. Someone's stomach as their God. Uh, and, and two, I might be hitting on this in the scriptures because Stacy and I are, are uh, we're trying to lose some weight right now and everything. So I think about food a lot. And, uh, and I have to be honest, it, it is a battle uh, with my stomach. So, uh, but with that said, when we have a struggle in our life, and if you put that into context, um, it, it's a strange thing to think about. But if your stomach is in the position of glory, You think about food all the time. You eat food all the time. You plan to eat more food later, and you always have within arm's reach a snack and a drink. And then, in reality, you are giving glory to food when it is constantly on your mind and is constantly a central focus of your life. And that sounds crazy and wild, but for some people, their their fridge is a temple. It's that place, or maybe it's a restaurant or a buffet that you go to, or you go to the store and you covet. Anyone ever done that? So I know I've been guilty of that. I go to the store, and I see something, and I'm like, that looks really good. I don't know what it is, but it's crunchy, and it looks good, so I'm going to get it. And uh, what happens, though, is if we glory in the food, then it becomes our worship. You sacrifice money. You sacrifice time. You sacrifice health. You sacrifice quality of living to have what it is that you glory in. Take a look at alcohol. Someone say, I have a drinking problem, and here's what I want to really hit on tonight, and we're going to go into this a little bit more in just a moment. But the reality is you don't have a drinking problem. You have a worship problem. Everything in life comes back to, like Pastor said, worship. See, when you really put it into context, we are built and created by God with a worship mentality, and everything in life is built around this mentality. The root of the problem is you're always worshiping something other than your God. It can be food, it can be alcohol, it can be sexual addiction, it can be shopping, it can be anger, whatever it is. The issue is worship. You can pull all the weeds, but if you don't grab the root, it will always come back. And that's why so many times we see people get into programs and get into things and they do well for a while, but then they fail because, yes, the weeds are getting pulled and some things are getting plucked out, but the root of the problem is not being addressed, and that is worship because the focus and the struggle is the thing that they are addicted to, whether it be the alcohol or the drugs, and they're worshiping that thing rather than their focus and attention being on worshiping God. When you're sad, you run to the bottle. Whenever you're happy, you run to the bottle. Whenever you're alone, you run to the bottle. So constantly you are worshiping this thing. And it comes back to the scripture when it talks about sacrifice. Here's the question, then what are you sacrificing? It's an expensive habit. You sacrifice your health. You can sacrifice your job. You can sacrifice your marriage. You're willing to sacrifice all these things because that is what is your glory and that is what you are willing to worship rather than God. You're laying laying all kinds of people and things around you in your life and you're literally slaughtering them. What you're doing is you're sacrificing people in your life so that alcohol might be worshipped as God. So see, no one really has a food problem. They have a worship problem. No one has a drug problem. They have a worship problem. 
No one has a gossip problem. They have a worship problem. No matter what it is that you're facing, it's a worship issue. Because when you worship God, then all of a sudden that no longer becomes what receives the glory in your life. God receives the glory in your life. That's why things change and shift. That's why his word will always be true in the things that he says. Because when you worship God, only great things come and only good things come from God. This is where idolatry comes into play. We can reach a place where it's not even a person that is in the position of glory. It can be a job. It could be Facebook. It could be a, a car. It could be your house. I want to give you an example. When I was uh, 13 years old, then uh, I started getting really into classic cars, and uh, I loved them. And me and my dad, we started going to car shows. And uh, when I was 15, then I got my first car. It was a 60 Chevy Bel Air. And I was in love with it, and then we traded it for a 55 Ford Custom Line. And uh, everyone knew me in town because it was the 15-year-old kid driving around a 55 Ford. And, uh, but I love that thing. And I literally got to the point, me and my dad, we worked on it. We rebuilt a lot of it and put a new paint job on it and did a lot of work constantly. But it got to the point to where it was my life. Everything, every single uh, penny that I made, then I spent it into that car. And I would uh, spend four times a week washing it and cleaning it and all this stuff and taking it to shows. And it became my life. It became the thing that I lived for. It became the thing that I glorified in my life. And uh, long story short, then uh, I was headed back to college with it. And I got ran off the road and went down an embankment. And uh, thankfully, God protected me and I, I wasn't harmed. I got out of it. Um, but it, it totaled the car. Well, I didn't learn my lesson. I got a new car and uh, started investing all my time in it, putting rims on it and putting a sound system in it and doing all kinds of crazy paint stuff and putting all this time and energy. In that car, I had a total of three wrecks and uh, within a year and a half. <laughs> and uh, that still didn't do anything for me. I got another car, and then I started spending time on it. I had two wrecks in that car. Needless to say, not a single wreck was ever my fault, not a one of them. But on the last wreck, on the last wreck, I don't know why. I don't know what it was. It was just my dumb brain finally clicking into gear. said, okay, God, what in the world are you trying to say? And immediately, as, as clear as I could hear him, he said, that's your God, not me. When he said that, it, it broke my heart because I'd spent so much time and energy on something that had no importance to God whatsoever. And it changed my life, and I've never had a wreck since then. Thank God for that. But my point is, is tonight, what do you glory? What's your God? What do you put all of your time and focus and attention in? Because whatever that is, then that's what you're worshiping. And if you have issues and you're having struggles and having ish things going on in your life that just don't seem to add up, it very well could be it's because you're not worshiping God. Instead, you're worshiping something else. The final verse in John, 1 John, he says to the church, keep yourselves from idols. That's an invitation of a loving pastor who wants the best for his people. And oftentimes it's not preached about a lot from the pulpit anymore. I'm thankful that we have a pastor that preaches the full word and isn't always just looking to give us something that will make us happy, but gives us truth and challenges us to live right and to live according to God's word. He wants them not to use God to feed their idolatry, but to remove their idolatry and be satisfied with the identity as children of God. And tonight that's my prayer that we will we will be satisfied with just who we are in God and living out that, that we're not living for other things in our life. We're not looking for the next best thing and the next biggest thing to come along. There's nothing wrong with having a new car or a new home or a new house as long as God is the central focus. And when God is the central focus, he'll direct you to the things that you're supposed to have. He'll direct you to the things that he wants you to have. See, here's the thing about the things you glory uh, or idolize. It will lie to you. It will consume you. It will overtake your life. It will cost you money. It will cost you time. 
and it will promise you a heavenly peaceful existence that they or it cannot deliver. And that's the problem with the things that we worship and the things that we glory in our life. So many times we're looking for something that can give us something that it cannot. That's why people get caught up in alcohol and drugs and things, because it, it, it gives them that moment. But the second that moment is gone, then they're just as empty as they were before. It's the same thing. There's people that have addiction with shopping. That moment of getting that new item. But the second that they've worn it, then it's over with. And they're looking and moving on to the next thing. The only thing that can give us peaceful existence is the glory of God. And we need to stand on that, and we need to look to that. When you glory in God, then you create a dwelling place for God's glory, which is powerful, life-changing, overcoming, and victorious. You present your body as a living sacrifice to whatever it is you glory in. And tonight, I, I, I'm honestly done, but I just I want to ask you, what is it that you glory in? What is it that you honor in your life and lift up? You know, in this world, uh, idolatry is, is such a, it's so rampant, it's almost hard to even know what is or isn't because in the church we've gotten so comfortable with so many things that still are idolatry and we just don't even recognize it. We've gotten so caught up in living this lifestyle to where God is something, someone that we love and someone that we have passion for but there's other things that come into play that can come before him quickly and immediately. It's quickly easy to get home, and the first thing we want to do is turn on the TV when we haven't even once said hey to God throughout the day. We haven't even once said I love you. We haven't even once opened our mouth and given him praise for giving us another day. Amen? And so I just want to challenge us tonight. I'm going to ask you to stand, if you will. I just want to challenge us tonight to, to be open and be honest. And I'm not pointing anyone out tonight, but I am pointing myself out. I'm calling myself out because there's things in my life that take precedence many times before God. And it shouldn't be that way. Back to what I said in the beginning. If you'll say, is this wholly unacceptable to God, then you have your answer. But a lot of times we just kind of make the answer up on our own. Or we don't ask the question because we know the answer. So we just don't ask it at all because we don't want uh, to follow the answer. And uh, I just want us tonight, can we just be uh, honest with ourselves? Worship takes sacrifice. My question tonight as well is, when's the last time you sacrificed in your worship? We'll sacrifice to get the new car we want. We'll sacrifice to get up early on uh, the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday. We'll sacrifice the sleep to get up and get a great deal at the store. Every single day we make sacrifices. But when's the last time we've sacrificed our, for our worship unto God? Coming to church is a great thing, but it's not really a sacrifice. This is where we should be anyway, right? So this part, to me at least, isn't a sacrifice. Sacrifice is doing something out of the normal, doing something out of the usual that I do, doing something that costs me something somewhere else. Lord, I just pray tonight, Father. Lord, I ask that you would just help us to be real with ourselves, Father. And Lord, that we would just open our hearts, Lord, open our minds, Lord. I'm sure every single one of us in this room, myself included, can, can, can point out areas in our life where we have brought glory to something or someone over you to where you have not been the central focus of our life, Lord. 
Lord, all around us, Lord, there is idolatry. All around us, there is stuff taking place, Lord. There are people that will literally eat, sleep, and breathe knowing everything about a movie star or about a, a sports player, a basketball player, Lord. Lord, there are people that will eat, sleep, and drink anything they can, Father, just to be closer to someone, Lord, to be closer of the knowledge of different things, Father, of different aspects of life. But then you go unnoticed, Father, so many times in the midst of all that. Lord, if we would have that same burning desire, that same, Father, intent to seek after you and to know you more and to eat and sleep and drink you, Father God. Lord, what a change it would be, Father, not only in our lives, Father, but in the atmosphere of the areas around us, Lord, of this community, of this city. Father, of our church, when we enter into these doors, Father, Lord, once again, it says in your word, Father, that there is glory that dwells, your glory dwells, Lord, in the praises of your people, Father. And, Lord, that glorious power, Lord, and in the midst of that power, no other power, Lord, can come in and bring any distraction or cause harm. But, Lord, we have to come, Father, with a sacrifice of praise, with a sacrifice of worship, with an intent and focus on you, Lord. I just proclaim that we would do that, Lord, in everything that we are. We would lay everything at your feet, Father, and be honest and say, God, here I am. I truly do want to give all I am to you and put my focus and intention on you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Would you mind tonight just getting out of your seat? Let's just come into the front. Let's just spend a moment in worship and seeking his face and glorifying and honoring him tonight. Amen.
Give him a hand clap of praise in this place tonight. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Just like we talked about last week, when his glory is in the room, you don't have a desire to go anywhere. Amen. When his glory is in the room, there's no place you would rather be than here in his presence. Hallelujah. And what's awesome is it's not just here. You can dwell in his glory in your car, at your home. Yes. When's the last time you have sensed his glory in your home? All you got to do is worship. When you begin to worship, his glory will come into the place and to fill the house. Amen? Amen. Pastor, I'll pass it off to you, sir. Right. Tearing down the idols, right? Amen. Amen. No more idols. Tell your neighbor, no more idols. No more idols. No more idols. Amen. Praise God. Well, just want to remind you, uh, Saturday, having an outreach, right, for our men. Man, man up. And uh, we'll be having a guest speaker, Chuck McAllister from Adventure Bound Outdoors. Also, we'll be giving away all kinds of uh, prizes and gifts from uh, anything from hats to guns. We've got a couple of guns we're going to give away. And so invite your friends, invite your unsaved friends, let them know about this. That's an outreach, right? And... Uh, Maybe you don't probably don't want to invite your enemies to this because they may win the gun and then, you know, and, but, uh, hey, uh, we're going to have a good time, right? And so uh, just invite, invite, invite because we've got all the food. And we, uh, we've already got all the sides ordered. We just need you to bring uh, a dish with you, and we're going to have a great time. We're going to believe God. And then on Sunday, we're going to be celebrating Father's Day in a big way, right? We always do uh, Mother's Day big. We're going to do Father's Day big this year, and it's going to be awesome. And uh, so I want you to be a part of that as well and uh, invite your uh, family to that as well, okay? Praise God. What's that? Camo. Yeah, camo. Wear your camo so nobody can see you. Okay. Uh, camo Sunday, right. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay, here at the church, okay, autumn leaves Friday night, all right, praise God, it's a good place to be tonight, right, yeah. presence of the Lord, freedom and liberty, and I expect that same thing on Sunday, and that God yeah. will touch hearts and lives, right, amen, Father, we love you, thank you for your presence tonight, we don't take it for granted, we don't take it lightly, we honor and we reverence you, we thank you, God, for your presence. Now, God, as we leave tonight, I pray that you would help us to search our hearts, see if there is any wicked thing in us. You said the heart is the most wicked, and who will know it? God, I pray that we would be open and transparent before you and before your presence. God, if there is anything that separates us from you and from your presence, that may not even be sin, it just things, as Jamie said, that we've allowed to take your place become priority in our lives 
pray, God, that you would just uh, deal with us. You would help us. We would put you high and lift it up so your train would fill the temple. And your presence would fill our lives. We thank you, God, for this atmosphere and this opportunity to just give you praise. Now go with us tonight. Let us find strength, hope, and grace in you each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you as you go tonight. Shake hands with some folks.